Today we're going to explore how penetration testers leverage the power of the Nessus scanner to uncover weaknesses in target systems. But there are issues. The expectation is that our customers will have already ran Nessus scans against their own systems before hiring us to perform a penetration test. So does that mean that the Nessus scanner really has any value for us as penetration testers since our own scans should theoretically be redundant? Let's talk about it. Welcome or welcome back to our channel. Uh, so today we're gonna examine the utility of the Nessus vulnerability scanner in our penetration testing framework. In an ideal cybersecurity posture, our clients would have already conducted thorough and continual scans of their network infrastructure. Ideally, this means all of their exploitable vulnerabilities would have been identified and remediated before we perform our penetration test. However, this is rarely the reality. Part of the reason is that as ethical hackers, we don't actually validate compliance, we exploit vulnerabilities. There's a big difference. Our goal here is to interpret and leverage the findings to compromise systems, which mimics an attacker's persistence and creativity. Nessus is a comprehensive vulnerability scanning tool and is predominantly used for compliance checks. We're gonna perform a scan to see exactly what type of information we get from Nessus and then see if there's anything valuable from a penetration testing perspective. Remember, all penetration testing tools should be used ethically, and while you're learning, you should confine them to the use within a penetration testing lab. I have Nessus set up on my Kali system already so that we can dive right into this. So let me show you quickly just how to install Nessus. If you go to the Tenable site for the Nessus download, you can see that it identified what system I'm using and then I can download it by curl. So I can just simply copy this command, go to a command prompt, paste it, and then it will download to my local directory. Once that's complete, I just need to install it using the dpackage command. I need to start the Nessus scanner and it can tell us all we need to do is execute this command. So let's go ahead and execute that. Once that's running, all we need to do is navigate to this URL. I did a ARP scan against the local network to see what the target uh, IP address is, and in this case it's 10.0.2.6. So let's create a new scan, perform a web application test. Our target again is 10.0.2.6. We'll select assessment. We'll do scan type. We'll do scan for all web vulnerabilities complex. Once that's configured, we'll select launch. So I wanna point out that the scan took 29 minutes to complete. Uh, I wanna make sure that you are aware that a lot of these can take a long time. So you need to budget that into your scope. So here you can see that there's one critical, one high, multiple mediums, etc. So let's take a look. And specifically, I want to jump to the CGI generic path traversal. And if I scroll down, you can see the output, and I'll open that up. So according to the description, it basically shows us that we can do a directory traversal and examine some of the local files. Notice that the Nessus has uh, labeled this as a medium finding, but it will actually provide us a stepping stone to gain remote access to the target. So if I copy this information here that they provide us, copy, and then I'll open up a new browser, 10.0.2.6, and then I'll append that information that we gathered from the Nessus scanner and hit enter. We can see here that it dumps the entire slash Etsy slash password file for us. We can see here that there's a username named Lone Ferret, and I'll just highlight that real quick. Now we can add this to our findings within the reconnaissance phase. In fact, uh, this is actually more than a medium vulnerability. So if we actually take this username and we do a brute force attack against the SSH application, we're gonna find out that the Lone Ferret user actually uses a weak password, which will allow us to actually gain access to the remote system as that user. 
So combining the fact that this is a medium finding that we can do a direct traversal, combine that with the fact that they use a weak password, Nessus basically found us a critical finding. As you can see, Nessus provides us with quite a lot of information, but it also presents problems from a penetration tester's perspective. Our first problem was that Nessus was created to allow system administrators to quickly identify vulnerabilities so that they can be patched. It was not designed for hackers to exploit those target systems, which means the number of criticalities listed is absolutely does not equate to the number of exploits we can target on the system. A very large percentage of these findings actually have no known exploit or are simply just proof of concepts. That really just doesn't help us. Our second problem is that there's an inflation within Nessus on the number of vulnerabilities on a system. I want to show you one more scan. I did a scan, a network scan against the Chioptrix level one system. And I wanted to do that so I could demonstrate how there is a problem with redundancy in some of these findings. So the open SSH issue has three criticals and two highs. The reason for this is Nessus uses multiple plugins and identifies the issue multiple times based on version information. In other words, if the open SSH is really old, there will be multiple vulnerabilities for each major update to open SSH. If we take a look at these three criticals, we can see there's one for open SSH version less than 3.1, one for less than 3.4, and another one for version less than 3.71. This doesn't really help us as a penetration tester because what the customer is going to do is they're going to see three criticals and expect three different types of attacks. In reality, it's just one problem. The open SSH version is too old and there's potential for exploits. If we open up the finding for the open SSH, in this case, the version less than 3.1, and we scroll down to the bottom, we can see that there's an exploit available, but it's specifically in the core impact tool. So what this means is the exploit may not be available to you unless you actually are using the core impact tool. As you gain experience, you will learn which vulnerabilities have exploits and which ones do not. Nessus tries to tell us by stating if it's available, if it's a proof of concept or simply theoretical. To be honest, most of the findings are actually useless to us, including the criticals because oftentimes there's just simply no exploit available for us to actually leverage. To compound matters, Nessus doesn't even find all vulnerabilities. From previous videos, when we ran reconnaissance against this target, we found an exploitable Lotus CMS on the target. Nessus actually didn't even find this as an exploitable vulnerability, which shows some of the fallibility in the Nessus scanner. So could we just use tools that only focus on exploits and not run Nessus at all in our penetration test. Considering that most vulnerabilities actually don't have exploits, this would seem to save us a significant amount of time. Unfortunately, we have to run Nessus regardless. So the question is why, why do we have to run it? So I actually stated the answer at the beginning of this video. There's an expectation that our customers have already ran Nessus against their own systems before hiring us to perform a penetration test. This means they expect us to hack those vulnerabilities identified in a Nessus scan, despite the fact that there may or may not be an exploit for that service. So let me say it a different way. Customers don't understand that simply because there's a vulnerability, it doesn't mean that there's an exploit. A fundamental flaw within penetration testing is customer expectations and a lack of understanding between what a vulnerability assessment is and a penetration test. So in our pen test report, we actually need to address this disconnect. So my recommendation to consultants as a penetration testing practice director was to let the client know that we saw the issues from our Nessus scan, that we tested them, what the results were, especially if we couldn't exploit them. That way the customer understands we perform due diligence against their systems. And there you have it. A peek into how penetration testers use the Nessus scanner to identify vulnerabilities and weaknesses in target systems. Thanks for joining us and until next time, happy hacking.